Well, hey, John. First of all, thank you very much for giving us some of your valuable time today. Could you maybe start by presenting yourself to our audience? Sure. Uh, my name is John Gosier. I'm the founder and CEO of Film Hedge. So, Film Hedge is a fintech company that provides uh, really sort of credit assessment and data to the types of financial groups that want to allocate money to film and TV productions. And then on the other side of the equation, we provide capital to film and TV producers. Okay. Could you tell us a little bit more about what brought you into this industry and how it is that you decided to create this company? How it came to be? In brief, obviously. Yeah, so um, what brought me into the space is I had some su success in the tech industry and I s had spent 10 years doing it. Prior to that, I had been in the entertainment industry. And so um, for me, it was kind of coming full circle and wanting to get back into entertainment. Uh, into movies specifically and so I wanted to find a way to in well I wanted to start investing in movies so I had sold a software company and so I took the money that I made from that and I started investing in film and TV projects I did four movies uh, they did really well uh, and you know I was very happy with how the process went and so I decided to uh, try to create a uh, repeatable process in a way to use, you know, have more money to keep doing the same thing. And so I went out to, uh, then I, I met my co-founders mm -hmm. and I went out to start uh, raising capital because using my own capital, it's like I can do, you know, so many movies, excuse me, I can do only so many movies uh, on an annual basis, but um, by raising more money, I could do a lot more movies, a lot bigger within deals the same time span. within the same time span. Okay. So I'm responsible for pretty much everything, meaning uh, that I, 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 take, I don't take credit for everything. I want right. to be clear. But um, what I mean is uh, my job is to delegate who's good at what um, and, and then let them just do what they do, right? I've, I'm fortunate enough to have brilliant people that I work with. I don't need to tell them what to do, but I know that if, um, you know, Mickey's good at one thing and Josh is good at another thing, you know, I can just take those responsibilities and I can push them in their direction. Mm -hmm. I, and I don't have to follow up. I don't have to ask a thousand questions. They just do it. That's sort of my, you know, I, I, it's almost like being the conductor. Yeah. It's like you let all the... So everything, everything goes through you, basically. Or not, not even that. You have so much trust already in here. I would say that it's starts with uh, the fact that you have to be heading in a direction, a singular direction, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's, again, using the analogy of an orchestra, if you just have a conductor standing at the front of the room, like, telling, you know, just, like, waving a wand, you don't have music. Right. You need players. And if you just have the players and they don't have anyone telling them how fast to play or giving them the notes or whatever, then you don't have music either. So it's a symbiotic relationship. Um, and, but in this case, everybody's such an expert in their respective fields that I, I, I know when things come in, I can just trust that they're going to get it done. So I wouldn't say it bottlenecks with me. I would just say that there's a lot of trust between the three of us. Uh, to just get yeah. things done. And make sure everything stays in sync, right? Exactly. So that you're all moving in the same direction. Exactly. Same exactly. Right. And then and then there's just the practical aspect of running a company. Someone has to be available to take all the calls. You can't have a uh, you can't run a company if you got, you know, however many people, three people, five people, four people who are in charge and it's just like, well, you know, if I feel like taking this call, I'm going to take it. If this other person feels like it, they're going to take it. Right. If no one feels like they're going to take it, then the call doesn't get taken. That doesn't work because stuff starts to fall through the cracks. And so um, in this case, I'm just the alt person who's always available to take any call and, um, you know, and direct it to where it needs to go. Okay. Whereas everybody else can kind of uh, be flexible, you know, a lot more flexible. But that allows them to be a lot more focused, yeah. whereas I have to kind of be aware of everything. And then finally, Mickey told us that it's your second year here in Cannes. So what are the main opportunities that a Cannes Film Festival offers to your company? 
We love it here at CAN. Uh, I think the opportunity that it provides us is to get our name out there as a brand of trust and credibility. Uh, we're not marketing because, uh, you know, we love filmmakers but we don't necessarily need to let filmmakers know that we have money to give them because they already know. They read the trades just right. like everybody else and they apply. They're, they're already coming to us. And then we don't need, and, and, and actually having this type of marketing doesn't really help us so much with investors. So who are we marketing to? We're just marketing to both sides to let them know that we're out here, we're real, we're doing deals, we're, we're accomplishing things and that builds trust because for the best deals in this industry, they're not even going to pick up the phone and call you if they don't trust you. Right, if you don't have a good track record. Exactly. They, they need to know your track record. They need to know where your money comes from. If oh, right. Transparency. Track transparency. Record. Because, you know, a movie could get totally uh, jammed up by the fact that they took money from the wrong investor. Uh, like money laundering situations. Too, right? It could be money laundering, it could be fraud, it could, it could just be negligence, you know, but uh, you don't want someone else's problems to become your problems by taking money from the wrong source. Right. And so, um, you know, and, and we've been pretty transparent about that. We're backed by investment banks and our investment banks are very well known investment banks and they had written off the film and TV industry they didn't want to put money in this space. Yeah, yeah. But what they like about Film Hedge is yeah. the fact that we're taking a discipline and a financial driven approach to what's called de-risking an asset class, which is we get rid of a lot of the uncertainty and a lot of the unpredictability about putting money into film and TV. And because of that, they give us their money. We've raised $100 million to date. We may be at a much bigger number by the end of this year, and um, between and, and we're doing that because, or we're we're able to accomplish that because they trust us based on the fact that we're yeah we're de-risking this asset class. So Mickey Vetter, one of the co-founders of Film Hedge. I'm a 20 plus year finance guy by trade, so. Most of my career has worked with wealthy families, helping them to invest in various asset classes, ranging from real estate to startups, energy, you name it. Um, met John uh, through a connection in Philadelphia, and when he explained to me what Film Hedge was, was all about, it made sense. I'd seen it happen and was familiar with similar businesses. Um, and so here we are. We, we launched yeah. Film Hedge three years ago. Yeah, right. Can 2023. Can 2023, our second year doing this is Seven Film Hedge, years. and it's been incredible okay. so far. Well, so you said you've been involved with film Petra Thief with John over 20 years, but what is it specifically that brought you into the film industry? It was less the, the film industry, more just the, 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 the financial, the financial part of, right. of the, 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 the industry. It was a, an incredible asset class that really has not, you know, for a lot of folks had no access to it, had no ability to, you know, uh, invest in it or invest in it the right way. So for me, it was the financial aspect of, you know, uh, getting involved in the movie space. Right. And, and, the space. and making it more efficient for mm -hmm. creators, right, to be able to get movies displayed and get their funding. So from the creative side, yeah, it gives access to capital. Formerly, they didn't have access to. But what's more interesting is from the financial side, you get very smart investors, lenders that were unaware or had no ability to invest in the space in the right way. And what Film Hedge does is it allows them to do it more efficiently, um, transparently, um, but also, you know, you can get a very consistent, predictable return if done the right way. Okay. Historically, people get burnt investing in movies because they right. rely on whether or not they're, they're a success or not. There's a way There's to- There's a lot of uncertainty within just the films and how they're mm -hmm. gonna do. And how they're gonna perform. And you're yeah. trying to eliminate that component. We, we like have, we film take, does well or badly, you're at least still gonna make back what you're yes. investing. Yeah, we, we take no, no performance risk at all. No performance risk at all. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us maybe a little bit more about what you do within the company? Mm -hmm. what so are your responsibilities per se? Yeah, so like I said, I, I had no, no media background until really film hedge. So my responsibilities primarily revolve around investor relations. So helping to raise money for the company to operate, um, looking to raise uh, money for us to lend with. Um, so it, it, and then again, as a startup, you know, you wear a lot of hats. So if there's anything I need to do that, um, you know, you'll do whatever. So if it's marketing, if it's 
you know, management, if it's, you know, you, you name it. You, you do wear a lot of hats, but my primary role was in the investor relations area. And then finally, could you maybe tell us a little bit more about what the main opportunities are that the Cannes Film Festival offers to you sure. guys as a company? Um, exposure, credibility, um, you know, again, we're fortunate to, for the second year, be on the, uh, the, the, the guide that everyone sees. So, you know, it's great. And obviously having a place like this and our, our sign out there, it, it, it brings a lot of just exposure to our company. So we're always looking for, you know, folks on the creative side to know that we're, that we exist. We're a resource, right? We're a resource, yep. And, and that's important too, because, you know, again, we're, we're, we're not the right capital for everyone. We're, we're kind of specific, but, you know, the more time we can spend getting to know the creatives and letting them know where we can help, that's important. Um, and also on the finance side, I mean, we're, we're fortunate to be talking to a lot of very large, credible, institutional type investors, but we're always, you know, open to, to talking to as many as we, we can. So for us, it's, it's really just, you know, kind of getting our name out there and letting mm -hmm. folks know that we exist Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Man. Yeah. I really appreciate it. No, thank you guys. As always, you're incredibly okay. helpful and happy to help.